Welcome back, I'm Laura Evangeline. This is part four, which is the final installment of the Feline Spooky mini series. I've already done three cards and today we are doing this tag trio. Links to the first three card videos are in the description box below. Now I haven't used this cute little mummy kitty yet, so I think I'll start with him. And I think brown gray sounds like an appropriate color for a mummy, so we'll get started using those. As I typically do with coloring, I'm starting with the areas I imagine to be in the shadow. So I've chosen a darker shade of this color, although not too dark because I don't think my mummy started out gray. I think maybe he's just a dirty old mummy cat. Although, since he's all wrapped up with these bandages, he could be a little puppy under there. At least my puppies kind of look like uh, kitty cats, although their tails are short. I have two little Yorkies. I have had cats in the past and I do love them, but uh, I really, really love my two little Yorkies, Max and Penny. Okay, so I'm continuing to blend to lighter and lighter shades. Each of the colors are listed here on the screen. And just as I did with the Bat Kitty, you can see him just above the mummy there, I want to kind of emulate the shape of a muzzle. So I plan to use a slightly darker shade in kind of a half oval shape around where his muzzle might be. And then I'll add a little bit of shadow underneath it and I'll keep the muzzle area lighter. I think you can kind of see in the Bat Kitty how that, even though there isn't a muzzle drawn on the illustration, it gives more of a shape to this to our kitty's face. Another element that gives him a little bit more life is to add some rosy cheeks. So I'm using this very light shade of pink. And even though he doesn't have visible ear, inner ear pieces, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of pink there too. I think it's kind of fun. Now the cat could be done here. However, since there are these banded strips, I think it would look better if I go underneath each layer with a darker shade, kind of giving it a shadow as if the bands are actually overlapping each other. I didn't even go back and blend this in. I left the lines somewhat harsh, if, if it is even harsh, and I really like the way it turned out. The last kitty that I have yet to use is this little ghost. I couldn't decide between blue shades or if I should do a cool gray shade. And so I started out doing the blue and you can see here how it's gonna turn out. And halfway through, I changed my mind and I went to the other one and started doing gray, thinking I was going to kind of abandon the blue one. However, I did go back and finish him and I actually like how both of them turned out. I just gave them both a wash with the lightest color in each of these shades from top to bottom over everything I colored. And now the blue one looks, I think, like he's glowing invisible. And I think the white one looks like he's in a costume or just wearing a sheet. For added embellishment, I'm using a silver metallic pen to add some dots, dashes, and lines around the gray ghost kitty. I'm also using the white jelly roll pen. And I'll use this white jelly roll on also the mummy kitty and blue ghost as well. In addition, on the blue ghost, I've swapped out the silver metallic pen for a blue metallic pen. And then for all three kitties, I've used a black glaze pen to enhance their cute little noses. Now, the only image left in this set is the little pumpkin that says Boo, where the O's are paw prints. I think that's so cute. I colored it with burnt orange shades, and the embellishments I added were the white jelly pen and a copper gel pen. The foundation for this tag trio comes from the note card frame and tag die set which I've used many, many, many times. So if you wanna see more tag ideas after this, check out my blog or gallery. I'll post the links to those in the description box. Anyhow, I've die cut several tags from pattern paper and vellum. I love a layered tag look as well as vellum since it can mute or kind of reverse highlight an area without blocking it totally out. Now the vellum tag I'm using here is the same as this pattern paper one but I've trimmed about a quarter inch from each side left and right, as you see here. I've also scooched it up on top so the pattern paper is exposed around the border. And I folded over the extra around the back. You could trim it off, but I like kind of this soft finished edge and then the vellum ends won't curl up on the top. This die set comes with three options to use as a whole reinforcement. It's another opportunity to add some more color and fun pattern. I settled on this one here and I'll attach it here with a bit of tape runner, but ultimately I'm securing it in place with a, um, an eyelet. 
and it's not really a necessary step. I love eyelets. They're not so easy to find in this size that's a good quality, especially in fun colors and shapes. So I tend to squirrel them away when I find them. Uh, it, like I said, it's not a necessary step, but for me, when I make tags, I just have to add it. I fiddled around with the placement a tad bit before settling on this. I added a bit of foam adhesive to the back and just before I was about to stick them down, I decided I needed to add a little bit of holographic thread bundled and wrapped around my hand so it would create kind of a swirling, glittery mess behind the kitty. This is an element I add to many of my projects and you may not have noticed it before and you may not feel like it stands out here in this footage either, but trust me when I tell you that in real life, it catches the light and shimmers in such a perfect way. It's just yummy and scrumptious, so I encourage you to give it a try. Of course, I still had to add a few sequins and some splatter and a little bit of twine because of course a tag needs something to hang from. And this little guy is done, so we can move on to the next one. The base of my tag starts out the same. However, I got rid of the vellum tag layer and I have a two and a half inch circle punched from this green pattern paper. It looks like the sentiment is going to fit between the kitty's head and tail, so I just need a little bit of black ink to add that there. Now I'll flip it on over, add a bit of dimensional foam adhesive, and secure it to the tag base. I also added a bit of foam adhesive to the back of the mummy kitty before attaching him. However, I ended up pulling him up because I wanted to tuck under this little piece of vellum cobweb. Since my green piece was already stuck down, I used another circle punch I already had in my drawer and used it as a template to cut away the excess before attaching the cobweb. And then I can attach the kitty back on top where he was before. Then a whole reinforcer, an eyelet, and a bit of black twine will finish this one off. Well, it's not quite done. I'll add some sequins later. But in the meantime, let's go on to our third tag. Once again, the tag base is starting the same. And for the vellum layer, I did trim off the quarter inch off each side. However, I'm not shortening it by wrapping it around the top. I'm going to leave the tail ends matching. In this one, I'm using again a two and a half inch circle punch. It's the same one I used as my template earlier. And I want to add a sentiment here. However, of course it's on black, so I need it to pop with a white or lighter colored sentiment. So I'm stamping in an embossing ink using a white embossing powder and heat setting it. The whole reinforcer was attached and then foam adhesive was added to the back of the punch circle as well as the back of our little ghost kitty. I added in an eyelet and attached the black circle and then I thought we need a little bit of magic with black splatter, white, and the clear shimmer ink. And before attaching that ghost kitty, I will once again add a little nest of holographic shimmer thread. I could add black sequins to this one as well, but I'd like a few more colors and contrast. So I found a purple mix as well as this violet and orange mix. I pulled out the sequins I liked, attached them, and then finished it off with a bit of black twine. I did go back and add splatter to a few projects I'd missed earlier. However, that pretty much wraps it up for this mini series. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think about this format of mini series tutorials, because I certainly had fun. All right, make sure you subscribe and like this video. And until next time, stay crafty.